Okay, good evening, everyone. I'd like to thank you all for joining us this evening uh, as we give a look at Naviance or an overview of Naviance uh, Family Connection for uh, our 10th grade families. Um, again, this presentation is being recorded, so if you do have to step out at any time, please know that it will be made available on our district website. But I'd like, you for, I'd like to thank you for joining us. Um, so an overview of this, this presentation this evening, we will be looking at Naviance, uh, which is a comprehensive tool that we here at the high school use to assist your students in their career and college planning as they go forward. Um, so what to expect from this evening? First, of course, an overview of what is Naviance. Uh, look at the career search tool, which is where we more intensely focus our use of Naviance with the students in the 10th grade, as well as a look at the resume building tool built into Naviance, which we are encouraging all of our high school students to utilize, as well as uh, working as a department uh, to expand the use of the resume builder so students are able to keep better track of their extracurricular activities throughout high school. We'll talk more about that in a little while. Um, as well as just an overview of the road ahead with Naviance at a glance, what to expect uh, with things such as the college search tools that your children will use more readily next year. So just to get right into it, what is Naviance? Naviance Family Connection is a comprehensive career and college search tool. The students at Wheatley will utilize Naviance to identify their areas of interest, how those interests translate into future careers, and then what preparation pathways will be needed to pursue those careers in the future. In addition, information such as your child's GPA, any AP or college entrance exam scores they may have are also uploaded to Naviance and made easily accessible over the course of the years. They're able to use this for some of the features that enable students later on in the process to compare themselves as they look at colleges to the admissions criteria that many of the schools they find themselves interested have. Um, so this is kind of a one-stop shop for college comparison purposes for your children. In addition, uh, we'll, be revealing, we'll be reviewing the portions of Naviance most applicable to your children as 10th graders, notably the career search and resume building tools. But I will give a kind of a brief overview of the college search piece as well. That'll be more widely used by your children in 11th grade, but we'd like to have you uh, have the opportunity to get a look at the road ahead. So first and foremost, the career search tools. And as we go through this presentation tonight, um, I do want to let you know that we in this district are getting a little bit of a sneak peek, so to speak. Uh, Naviance has put a good deal of resources and energy into updating their career search piece um, recently. Um, they've actually given it kind of a, a facelift, so to speak, a new look. Um, and behind it, they've kind of adjusted the functionality, the features, the information that students get to access, in my opinion. They have made it a little bit more user friendly for students. It also has become a little bit more of a, I guess, a powerful tool. Uh, you know, in the past, I, I've worked in other districts and Naviance is pretty widely utilized across districts in Long Island. Um, but for the most part, the, the use of Naviance in, in most districts is really restricted to the 11th and 12th grade for the college search piece as well as the college application support that it provides, um, with some districts utilizing, notably, which we'll speak about tonight, the career interest profiler. Um, some of the additions and changes that Naviance is making is really making those career search tools a little bit more rich and a little bit more useful um, for students. So I, I think it, it really does lend itself to, to kind of supporting what our guidance department is looking to make its mission going forward, which is to assist students in identifying their end game as they approach the, the college process um, and to really give them a, a finer and a stronger sense of what it is they'd like to do. Of course, we don't have an expectation for our students at 15 and 16 to know exactly what they want. But our goal is to work together with them and their families to make sure that they have at least a strong idea of what their interests are. And once you have that knowledge of self and that knowledge of your interests, it makes it much easier to make determinations and decisions as to your path going forward. So Naviance's Career Interest Profiler helps undecided students gain a better sense of which fields match their interests. What they do with this uh, this, this profiler is they'll review a series of tasks that may be performed as a part of various jobs, and they'll indicate whether or not that task is something they would like to do, they would dislike doing, or they, if they're unsure about their uh, opinion on it, they express that. 
just as an example, and this is a, uh, a question, believe it or not, taken right from the career interest profiler. Students are asked if they're interested in developing a more accurate way to predict the weather. And they indicate whether or not that's something they'd like to do, they're unsure about, or they dislike doing. Once the assessment is completed, the students receive data on a number of different career fields and majors related to those fields that match their interests. And it helps them begin to develop a more tangible sense of what preparation might be required going forward as they start to connect with careers that interest them. So what I'll do now is I'll actually drop you into one of our demo students. Uh, I'm gonna have to adjust my sharing. Hold on, because I'm only sharing a tab and you're gonna need to see everything. Entire screen. Yes, that would be this. Okay. All right, so now you're looking at what your students see when they log into Naviance. Now, I would also like to take note uh, this past week on Monday and Tuesday, the guidance counselors did push into our 10th grade social studies classes and walk the 10th grade students through both this career interest profiler tool as well as the resume builder. So your students were given the opportunity to log into Naviance and to get a sense of what this tool could do for them, how it could be used, and as well as an overview of what to expect with it going forward. So as your children log in here, there's a host of options that they have. Formally, formally I should say, the career interest profiler was stored under the careers tab in Naviance. In this new update, I mentioned that we at the East Williston School District are early adopters of, it's under the self-discovery tab. Naviance offered districts the opportunity to remain with the old style format through July of this year or adopt early. Um, as I spoke about it with the guidance counselors, we all unanimously decided if things were going to change anyway, as we're looking to increase the usage of Naviance across grade levels within the district, um, as well as expand it down into Willits Road as well. It just only made sense to train our students and our families on the new version. So it, this is the version we're using. Not every district on Long Island is utilizing it. If you do work in education um, and you do work in a district that maybe hasn't adopted this, this may look a little different than what you used to, but navigating to self-discovery home this provides students with access to a number of different age and grade level appropriate uh, assessments that they have the opportunity to take. So my demo account right now has access to kind of the across the gamut uh, profilers. Some of these will not be utilized by our high school students. They're a little bit more middle school appropriate. Um, they are here because we are preparing again as a department to review them to see what would be appropriate to work with some of our younger students down at Willits Road. But the ones that pertain mostly to the high school students as of right now are the career cluster finder, which we did utilize with our ninth graders this year. And then for the 10th graders, the career interest profiler. So one key component of the recent update that we saw from Naviance in the past, the career interest profiler was a much longer assessment. Uh, I, I wanna say it was about 151 questions of the nature of the one that I read to you on that previous slide. In addition, it could only be completed once in the course of a child's high school career. So as I mentioned earlier, typically we didn't really see too much utilization of the Naviance career assessments prior to 10th grade. One of the reasons for that was if you're only gonna be able to do the career interest profile at once, which is a strong tool, you want the students to be as mature as possible and to be as settled in their interests as a high schooler can be um, while you're still doing it early enough for it to be of use um, so that it's as accurate as possible. I always found this to be a flaw in the system. Many other folks in the guidance world felt that way as well. Naviance finally heard that. So that retake button is here now. Students do have the opportunity to retake this as much as they would like. So if the students took it during class time and maybe didn't take it as seriously as they could or should have, they do have that opportunity to adjust it and change it. In addition, once it's completed, they are able to review to view their results. And so right now, Naviance has shortened that career interest profiler down to about 50 questions from uh, whatever that original number had been. I, I want to say it was it was an odd number, 151 or so. It was it was excessively long, or 171. Um, those 50 questions, they answer it, and what it does is it takes those and it aligns the students and uh, scores their results within the Holland Trait Scale. And you can see here, it's different personality types. 
and how those match up to the students' answers. So how they scored in the enterprising range, conventional, social, realistic, artistic, and investigative. In addition, it breaks those trait scores down for them. And you can see that the sample students scored a 30 in the enterprising trait. And then it provides a breakdown of those top four Holland traits that align with the students' answers and what it means to them. So an enterprising individual tends to be someone who likes to lead and persuade. They like to sell things and ideas and generally avoid activities that require careful observation and scientific anal analytical thinking. The conventional personality uh, is someone who likes to work with numbers, records, or machines in a set orderly way. They generally avoid ambiguities and unstructured activities. So the students have the opportunity to read these over. And, and as we express to them, it's an assessment. It is not a uh, absolutely set in stone <laughs> um, assessment of who you are. But this, like any other tool, can provide you with helpful insights. As you read this, we ask the students to ask themselves, does this ring a bell? Does this ring true to you as you think about some of the things that you enjoy doing in your leisure uh, time, in your classes in school, the work that appeals to you versus the work that you find yourself really having to kind of gear yourself up to do? Does this fit? Does this suit you? And the students have that opportunity. Uh, they can also view careers that fall within the uh, Holland trait categories that align to each box. And then it also gives a complete result. So those are the synopsises of the Holland scale. This is a much more in-depth review, again, of the enterprising trait, the conventional trait. So if that tidbit or that brief synopsis didn't give them that context and that clarity that they would have liked, they have the opportunity to research it a little bit further. And it gives them the opportunity here, rather than go through their top four categories, to go through all of them to see each of the different areas. In addition, it provides them with career recommendations that match as the top most applicable results to the scores that they received. So they're able to click them and say, interviewers, compensation and benefits managers, just those quick snippets, those quick careers that, that match their score. In addition, scrolling down allows them to see all career recommendations based on their interest. This is where we recommend the kids go just so they can overview their career search filtered by score on the career interest profiler. As we see here, it'll give best fit careers. Score, uh, scores align most closely to the careers labeled best fit. In addition, they can sort these by title. So this would be an alphabetical list of the occupations, education, the level of the higher level of preparations required. And so we'll just, as an example, uh, in terms of education, these are those careers that require the most preparation that align to the students' responses on the career interest profiler. So here we see education administrators. I did happen to be the one that filled out the uh, career interest profiler. So it does give you a sense of how accurate it can be. It did come up, it did come up as okay. So maybe I'm I'm more mentioned it meant to be an investment fund manager, which is a good fit, but I love what I do. So I'm happy. But again, it, it does. And we pointed that out to the kids, too, because as the counselors did their own searches here uh, and did their own sample profilers, oftentimes they did find their responses, putting them into the helping professions. So it does allow students to have kind of a sense that if you're answering these questions earnestly, again, is it a hard and fast and cold and 100 percent? Uh, referendum on what you should be doing? Absolutely not. But it helps to point you in that in the right direction. And that's really for our underclassmen, our ninth and 10th graders, what our goal is for them as a department. We want them to really start to think about what it is that interests them. Um, you know, one of the things we found in, in the guidance department um, in looking at kind of the approach to college and career counseling in the in the field of education over the last several years is there's been such a focus on college and career readiness and what that typically has boiled down to in most places is the focus is on college readiness which is absolutely important and the vast majority of our graduates will go on into fields that require college preparation however college is a means to the end which is getting you the preparation that you need to get into the career field that you'd like to be in, a career field that you're satisfied in. So for that reason, we ask the students to start to identify first what area, what field they'd like to get into, and then we can use that to help inform their approach 
to the college application process. So we start here with our underclassmen and just looking at the different options. And so you can see here, um, these are all uh, fields that require graduate level professional training and education. Here we see some uh, that require four year degrees and clicking on these allows the students to get a deeper look then at that career so they can explore it and get a sense again as to how good of a fit it is because as we've been telling the students while it may come up as a result for you that doesn't necessarily mean it's the perfect fit but we want you exposed to the different fields that are out there so the students can read a quick overview of what that particular career entails again the at a glance education that's typically required for someone in this field, the median national salary, which their eyes always shoot right to once they find out it's there. Um, and it is important to know the clusters and pathways that it relates to. This is a little bit more helpful for those ninth grade students. And if any of you were in that ninth grade Naviance parent overview that I gave a few weeks ago, you'll remember the cluster piece. Um, this is a slightly more general approach to the career research process it really lets you look more in broad strokes at where your interests align and then you start to research the careers that fit into that because our 10th graders are a little bit more advanced a little bit further along in their high school process we move towards the career interest profiler for them because again we do want them to begin to have that opportunity to narrow this down they're still able to utilize and review the clusters of course and they can utilize the cluster finder tool if they make an appointment with their counselor but for those 10th graders because they're more advanced in the process we do like to start here and then again just researching the career further it gives you what they do brass tacks what are some of the basic core tasks that someone in this profession has this is where we encourage our students to look at it and say to themselves as you read this synopsis these bullet points are these things that appeal to you or are they not are there some of these bullet points that appeal to you and some you look at and say oh i couldn't in a million years see myself doing with that dealing with that but i would like to do some of it so just as an example approving rejecting or coordinating um, lines of credit or commercial real estate or personal loans. A student may look at that and say, oh, I wouldn't necessarily want someone's fate in my hands. I, I don't think that's something I'd want to do. But plan, direct, or coordinate the activities of workers in the branches, offices, or departments. Um, you know what? I, I could kind of see myself doing that. I, I could see myself sort of maybe not in a system like that because I, I wouldn't want to reject people for loans. But I, I could see myself kind of taking that leadership role. It helps them to get a sense of, what pieces of a career they like, what pieces of a career they don't like. And then from there, as they're doing their research, they look out for those bullet points and they'll start to see pieces in common. You know what? This doesn't have that drawback that that previous career had for me. But look at that. It, it does have uh, planning, you know, and they can connect it to other managerial positions that are a benefit for them if they find out that's where they're interested. Scrolling down again in this overview, beyond that national mean salary, students are also able to see the wage breakdown across the U.S., hovering over New York, $190,000 a year is the average for someone in the finance manager uh, role. And then scrolling down, of course, the related Holland traits. So for this, for our purposes here, since we did arrive at this career, through the career interest profiler, we know this is going to be a Holland match for the results on that because that's how we navigated here. If students were navigating through the cluster finder, the uh, you know any of the other just general career searches, they could look at this and notice, oh, okay, this is this is a career that fits that that uh, mm -hmm. result I got on the career interest profiler. Here we were filtering through it, so we know. And then what I was very happy to see, and and again, any of the parents that were here for my ninth grade presentation may remember me discussing this when we scroll down to related majors. So in the past, one of the features that I found made the old career interest profiler much more valuable and much more usable was the opportunity to see the related majors uh, that individuals who go into the given career that you're researching typically utilized or the the majors that they typically pursued in college when we made the changeover uh to the new platform for naviance back at the end of february one of the things the counselors and i immediately noticed was lacking when we went to related majors the related college majors was still there but as you see here now this is clickable it was not and that was a source of disappointment for us we had reached out to naviance as 
I imagine many other guidance departments did to indicate, hey, that piece of functionality is important for us because what it will do, it works with Naviance's built-in college search feature. And well, I've been logged out. So the big reveal kind of went bust, but <laughs> once I log back in, we'll show you. And I'll cheat a little bit and skip to the favorited ones so I can get right there. Apologize for that, everyone. There we go. Okay. So when we go back down, it is now clickable and it will not lock the, log the kids out. But what it does is it connects to that search feature in Naviance, that college search feature, and it provides students with a list of all of the different schools in Naviance that offer that major they selected. So in this one, I selected general finance. So of course it gives us a large host of responses. It gives us about over a thousand schools in Naviance that it has data on that offer that particular major. And it allows students, again, in an exploratory way to scroll through and click on it. And then once they click there, they're able to research the particular school, get a general overview of it, uh, the graduation rate, the school's overall acceptance rate, college overlaps, which is other colleges that applicants to this school apply to. They'll give you the top 10. So as the students are looking at American, as an example, perhaps it's not exactly what they want, but they do like in general the fact that, oh, you know what, it, it has roughly the kind of reputation that I would like. Um, it's in the region of the country I would like. Where are other students who are looking at American applying to? They're able to click that and it will bring that up for them. They can, of course, get an average idea of the net price broken down by family income and different bands so they can select their own and get a sense of what their sticker price could potentially be expected to be, the overall graduation rate, the nationwide acceptance rate. And now what I always find helpful here and one of the beautiful things about Naviance, students are able to also check out what's called the scattergram. This uses Wheatley School specific data to provide students with insight into what's required to be accepted into the school. So they can actually look in these green check marks, give you a sense of, okay, this student was accepted with an SAT score of, um, oh, I think I need glasses, 1110 and a GPA of 3.19. This student was accepted with an SAT score of 1210 and a GPA of 3.61. And all those green checks, again, enable them to get a better sense of students from the Wheatley School. So oftentimes, you know, we hear about how nationwide admissions aren't always, admissions profiles aren't always necessarily the best predictor for regional admissions profiles, and it becomes a little bit more difficult to control for. The Scattergrams takes that away because it actually gives us that data from our community here at Wheatley um, historically over the last several years. So it provides a much clearer picture for students. So as they're doing that research, they can also break it down by ACT score as well. So students GPA and ACT concordance also. So again, this functionality, students can really start to look at this year and start to get a sense of. We encourage them first before they really start to generate the list of schools that they're interested in. We do like for them to first and foremost start to identify the careers and the career areas they'd like to go into. So they can begin to generate a sense of, apologize, so they can begin to get a sense of what majors they'd like to pursue. But I did want to draw your attention to that because I, I did recognize a few names logging into the chat that were in my ninth grade presentation and I did voice my disappointment and I am, am glad to see that's there. It is still a little finicky. Uh, it seems like they're still working it out and getting that to work as smoothly as it did. But as you saw there, it did give us access to the full range of schools in Naviance that do have that major. So that is a tool that we find to be very useful to students. Um, and just in general, just going back, I'll just continue to work in the same occupation. Um, they're able to identify again, 
those related majors. In addition, the skills and experiences tab, this gives more insight into, again, what this career requires, the knowledge base overall that they recommend. Obviously, it's important to have an understanding of economics and accounting, administration, and management if you are going to be a finance manager. But again, scrolling down, the skills that you need, reading comprehension, critical thinking. And what we ask our students to do is review these. And as they find careers that interest them, we ask them first and foremost, if you're interested in this career and you're looking at the skills that are required for it, start to identify for yourself how you can continue to build on those skills. Are there extracurricular activities that we have here at Wheatley that can help you to sharpen them. As an example, critical thinking. Well, one of the great things that you can do to help develop your critical thinking skills is to join the mock trial team. You know, formulating those arguments, building them are really great at getting you to think things through critically. And you can start to develop that skill set within yourself. Um, speaking, again, mock trial, just as an example, helps to you to develop your speaking abilities. In addition, are there any different other opportunities for you to utilize that? Some of the peer leadership opportunities that we might have where students can, you know, again, offer up conversation with students, active listening. Again, this actually all lends itself rather well to mock trial. So I keep going to that well, but I, I, I promise you it's not the only extracurricular activity we have. Uh, but again, those things that they can use. In addition, what coursework can you do? Um, you know, reading comprehension. Some of our English electives, creative writing, can you take that to strengthen that skill in yourself to make you a stronger candidate when you eventually do attempt to pursue a job in this field? And then again, the activities that people in this field will typically do, they work with computers, they communicate with their supervisors. Um, you know, I'll have students who will come to my office and say, you know, what, Mr. O'Brien, I really don't like to work with computers. I want to be outside. I want to be working with my hands. If you have that insight about yourself and you see a job that you're thinking about, but then you notice, oh, you know what, there's going to be a lot of computer interaction you're forewarned and therefore you're forearmed and you have a better sense of, you know what, this might be a career. I am interested in it. I, I think that all the pluses in it outweigh that negative, but now I know about it. So I'm aware that it is something I'm going to have to, to kind of deal with. In addition, and in addition, the tasks that people in this field will perform. And what I always told students uh, as a counselor, when reviewing their potential careers in the career interest profiler, the tasks field for me is one of the more important ones, um, because what I always suggest that they do, read through the list of tasks in any given job that you think you might be interested in doing. And just very simple, put a plus or a minus next to it if it's something you'd like to do or you don't want to do. And as you go through it, if your pluses outweigh your minuses, then chances are this is going to be a really good fit for you. If the minuses outnumber the pluses in a significant manner, start to ask yourself, okay, what career can I find that'll help me get most of, if not all of these pluses, but maybe minimize some of these minuses? What might be a better fit for me? And so for that, once they go through that, I typically would advise students to return to the overview. If say the, it, let's say in this case for the student, the, the negatives were, were too numerous, they can scroll down and they can look at related careers under related majors. These are going to be careers that are similar, but of course, different in their own right. That may be a better fit, but they're along the same line. And the students from right here can click and begin to get information about those related careers. Again, the very same career, uh, the very same information that we got in our previous example. In addition, the wages tab, as I said before, the students love this one and I understand why, <laughs> but they can look it over to get a sense of what the average salary is for the position they're uh, looking at in each state as well as across the nation. Beyond that, and this is something new to this update that I really appreciate, Naviance has added a state-by-state -state wage range breakdown by city. So in the past, they had a handy chart that, give you, that gave you the national breakdown, a breakdown, um, and a breakdown by state. They've further broken that down for us, and they will actually give us wage, range, wage ranges by city. And what makes this so handy is, of course, we have the New York City scale. Um, so it controls for some of those outliers that we might see coming from different parts of the state. Um, it gets us a sense of, hey, if, if you'd like to stay here, as an example, and you work in New York City, this would be your salary range. 
Nassau and Suffolk has its own breakdown and the students are able to see what the salary breakdown range for this career annually right here in our own backyard is. And of course, across the different parts of the state and they're able to select others as well. Uh, if maybe their plan is to potentially relocate after graduation, they can select other states and get a sense of what the salary breakdown is for this career in those major metropolitan areas. So for me, this was a really great addition for students. And what I've always told them is don't jump straight to the salary tool. Look at those tasks associated with it, the breakdown and the overview of the job. Find out if it's something you're interested in doing. Once you have a sense of whether or not it's something you're interested in doing, look at this salary scale. Find out if this is something now that you know you're interested in it. Can you support yourself doing? Are you going to be making the salary that you'd like to make? Don't jump straight to a career because of the salary, because as we all know, people who don't enjoy what they do tend not to do very well at it and often are not towards the top end of the salary scale. However, if you enjoy what you do, you are more likely to excel. So it's about finding that balance. Use this tool once you identify if a career is for you to see if you can support yourself doing it. If you as a student, don't see this as something that you can make the money you feel you would need to make, then go back to that overview, the related careers tab. And again, find one of those careers that gives you those pluses and minuses while at the same time meets those salary needs you have for yourself. So these are some of the concepts that we prevented, presented to our 10th grade students over the past week. Um, this is the tool that we gave them access to and did have them go over. And we will be working with them um, you know, utilizing those results over the next few years as they start to move into the more active phase of the college search process, which will start in junior year. So from here, that takes us through the careers piece. Just going back to the skills and experience part, because this was related as well, and I wanted to touch upon it. Um, we did talk about some of the things that you can do or that we talked to the students about being able to do in high school to build that, that activities resume. To, to build that list of skills that'll help them to be marketable and competitive in the job field once they decide to move into it. Beyond that, Naviance has the resume uh, builder feature, which our counselors did go over with them this past week as well. And what the resume feature does is it enables students to store their different extracurricular activities, their coursework and education here uh, during their time at weekly, Wheatley, any volunteer work that they do, or, and as you see here, any academic awards they win, music and artistic achievement, um, yeah, sports is an option for them to add as well. And what we recommended they do is each of them start their own resume. And then just as each year goes on, keep a log of everything you've done in high school. Because once the time comes for them to apply to college, colleges will look for an activities resume. They will want a overview of what the students have done. They want a sense of how well-rounded they are. They're strong in the classroom. What do they look like outside of the classroom? And it's such a pain in the neck for them to, in senior year, look back as they're staring at that common application and say, oh gosh, how many years did I do this? When did I do that? We want them to have it all here in one place, one-stop shopping. Um, I am working with one of our department heads as well to see if we can build a component into one of the classes um, to have this tracked a little bit more regularly. That is not in place yet, but that is something we are looking to do. But in the meantime, we did introduce this tool to our students. The counselors did express the importance of tracking this for them to enable them, again, to have that ready to go. It's an important skill for them to develop, especially once they move beyond Wheatley and beyond even that college process. When we talked about identifying the different tasks and the different skills that you might need for a job you're interested in, obviously one of the primary functions of the resume is proving you have those skills. This is the experience that led to me developing the skills that make me a good fit for your company and building these resume skills and, and getting used to kind of providing that proof on paper is, is something that we're looking for our students to develop now going forward. So that's an overview of the resume builder, as well as the career tab. Um, and then just what to expect from Naviance moving forward. Really, as we move into 11th grade, as I had stated, um, the more active phase of the college search begins. And here we ask our students to build off of some of the career area research that they've done. 
to identify colleges that are a fit for the preparation those careers will require. And for that, Naviance has a number of different career, uh, I should say college search tools, both the super match uh, and the college match, as well as the advanced college search. So we saw a little bit of what those results can do. And just looking from here, under the college search tab, which the students will use much more regularly uh, in junior year. But the students are able to identify and enter in all of the criteria that they're interested in a college having. Is it a four-year school or a two-year school? Public, private, or institution, or no preference, meaning is it a state school or a private institution? Their surroundings, is it near a large city, et cetera, et cetera. And they can move through and narrow it down by region. Um, the student body breakdown. There's just, Naviance has so many filter opportunities available. And of course, what will be the most important will be the majors offered. Does the school have major A, B, or C? Um, as, as we saw from the, the career interest profiler, finance general. Then once that's done, it'll generate a list very similar to the one we saw in the career interest profiler of all of the schools that have that major. And they're able to click on it as we did uh, and look at what are some of the criteria that they can expect to need to meet in order to be uh, a relevant and strongly considerable candidate for admission to that school. Um, students are then able to favorite different colleges. So they appear on the colleges I'm thinking about tab. So they can, again, continue to follow them. The deadlines will appear. So Adelphi happens to be favorited in the demo account, clicking on multiple deadlines. If a student is considering applying early action, they can see that the deadline for the school is December 1st. Um, there's another deadline here, which I believe in this case is probably for scholarship consideration. That's January 15th. Um, a suggested rolling admissions deadline. Um, and each of the different schools with restrictive early action, early decision, will have those similar deadlines available in Naviance. So it'll allow your students in junior and senior year to organize their college choices uh, more efficiently. In addition, one of the nice functions of Naviance, and I just happened to have a Delphi up here because it was favorited in the demo account, on the guidance counselor end, the counselor can see what schools the student has favored and is considering as well. So when a child comes in to meet with their counselor to talk about their college application process and some of the schools they're interested in, the counselor can go right into their Naviance account, open up your child and see, oh, these are some of the schools you're looking at and they can have a deeper conversation. So it, it's definitely a good option. Um, it, it definitely uh, simplifies that uh, that process for working with students as well. And then in grade 12, Naviance has a high number of ways in which it facilitates the actual sending of your child's supporting documents. Um, we will send your child's transcript and letters of recommendation directly to the colleges through Naviance. Um, your child will apply via Common App. That's something that we'll go over in greater detail in junior year, of course. But just again, to give you an idea as to the road ahead with Naviance, um, those are some of the ways that will support in 11th and 12th grade. Um, and we talked a little bit about the college search tool. So uh, that kind of brings us to the conclusion of the overview, the career interest profiler, information that the children were able to go through this week and some of the results that that provides them, as well as that resume building tool, which we encourage them to utilize. Um, the address for Naviance can be found here. I will be posting this presentation on the district website um, after this evening, as well as the PowerPoints so that will be clickable. It can also be accessed through the, uh, the through the Wheatley School webpage, so parents can access it there. In addition, all of the functions and features that I did just show you um, are accessible to you through parent accounts as well, um, meaning that with a parent account, you are able to review um, your child's progress on any of the different career interest profilers or cluster finders or college searches that they may do um, to review what it is they're doing to help you to have that conversation with your child as well. If you are interested in uh, a Naviance parent account that would be linked to your child, uh, I do ask that you can complete the form here. Again, the uh, presentation will be posted on the website, but what I'll do is, in case you're interested, I'm gonna drop the link in the chat right now. 
simplify that and that way you can all figure figure uh figure it out <laughs> fill it out um if you are interested so that concludes my presentation this evening um i would like to open it up to questions if if any parents currently have any questions or there's anything else you'd like to know about naviance please uh, feel free um let me know you can feel free to unmute if you'd like or put it into the chat, whichever you're more comfortable with. Okay. Uh, well, as I said, that link is there in the chat for any parents that would like to request parent access account. Um, any questions that you may happen to come up with after the end of our meeting this evening, please do not hesitate to reach out to me, to reach out to your child's guidance counselor. We're more than happy to walk you through this. Um, again, this is a tool that we really feel um, can be greatly used to enhance your child's not just college application experience, but a career research experience as well, which ultimately will help to inform that college application process. So please do not hesitate to utilize it. And any questions you have, never hesitate to reach out to us and guide. Oh, I do see a hand raised. Yes, go ahead. Uh, my question is after we register for the parent Naviance, um, what is the next step? Like are we, we get an account and then is that account linked to my child's account? So I, I can see, what what they're doing or do I have my own input? I can, you know, like, how does this work? Absolutely. So yes, the account is linked to your child's. Um, so when you click on that form, one thing you will see is I do ask for your eldest child's name, but I will also ask for any other children that you happen to have in the district. So that is what enables me to go through and make sure each of them are linked to your parent account. Once that's done, you're able to click and see any of the different answers they give on the career assessments, the profile of the cluster finder, um, you know, as well as when they complete college searches and favorites, some of those colleges, you're able to see the colleges that are in their favorited list. Um, you're also able to potentially add colleges on your end as well for your child to consider. So if you happen to be doing a search using Naviance's search tool and you see a school that you feel your child might be interested in, you're able to favorite that as well and recommend it to your child to review. Um, so you'll have some interactive uh, opportunities there as well. Of course, a parent account is not something that you must have. You're also able to access your child's account by having that conversation with them, you know, utilizing their password and things such as that. I typically just find that there are some parents who are more comfortable having their own access to kind of overview it and look at each individual child so they don't have to remember all three logins. Um, I, I say three because I have three kids in school, <laughs> but as many children as you happen to have. Um, so that, that option is there for you. But yes, you will be able to see your children's individualized results. Any other questions? I, I have a question. Sure. Do, do the kids normally, this sounds like it's a lot of independent work on their own. Is that, is that, am I getting this or is this something that there's time set aside throughout the school year or different times for them? How do they know that they're achieving the benchmarks of what they should be doing within the system? Mm -hmm. uh, Absolutely. So our counselors did push into the classrooms to give them the opportunity um, to go over this and get this information this past week. Um, so the counselors did go there. In addition, um, in the junior parent meeting, um, the council will typically, um, if those career interest profiler results are there, review the results and talk to them about it. Beyond that, um, the counselors are also available throughout check-ins with the students to walk them through any questions they might have about results that they've gotten. Um, there are no hard benchmarks for the students to have. Um, this is a tool for them to use as much or as little as they feel comfortable using. So it's not, oh, you know, you happen to be behind in the profile. Um, you know, some students come to us and really feel very comfortable with the career that they're interested in going into and already have a sense of the preparation pathways they'd like to do. For them, they'll say, well, you know what, this, this, this profiler is nice, but I really don't feel like it's for me. I kind of have had this vision for myself of what I'd like to do and I'm pursuing it. That's fine. But for those students who are unclear, we offer up this tool to them um, and, and we do check in with them. In addition, the counselors and I have been having conversations about expanding the number of check-ins we do with them. Um, you know, to beyond those once per year in the grade level push-ins to introduce a concept in Naviance. Um, 
I would like to as well begin to set with the counselors times to meet with the students separately. It is always a balancing act because we want to get this information to the students, but at the same time, we have to be mindful of the class time that they may lose. Um, but again, in conversations with the counselors, as well as one of the department directors, I, I have been looking to expand our overview of Naviance and our, our check-ins on Naviance for the students to a little bit more frequently. Um, and of course, the students have every opportunity to schedule an appointment with their counselor, um, you know, whenever they would like to, to get access to talk about this a little bit more as well. Um, so a good no amount of it. Yes, it is self-paced. It is self-driven based on the amount that the student feels they would like to look into it. But at the same time, that support definitely is available for them from the counselor. Any other questions? I, I think I see a hand up. I just don't know if it's if it's up from before or okay. Any any other questions I, I can uh, answer? Okay. If anyone thinks of anything later on, please do not hesitate um, to reach out to me and the counselors and to let me know. I, I'd like to thank each of you for coming. And again, please do feel free to sign up for a parent account uh, using the link I did put in the chat. That will be on the guidance department webpage as well if, if you miss it from here. Um, but thank you all for coming. I, I really appreciate you all taking the time to to come out this, this week right before the break. I, I know it, it's a little bit hectic for everybody. So I, I thank you all for taking the time. And everybody, please have a restful and enjoyable break with your families. Thank you so much. Thank you.